Hello everyone, my name is Richard from Home Tech Video. This video we're going to be covering zones and hotspots and show you how these work uh, within Blue Iris and also uh, some of the reasons why you might want to have a zone set up. So zones are used to black out certain areas or mask areas that you do not want to have triggered if there's motion. So for example, on um, this camera, I have a lot of traffic that goes down our road and then my neighbors come in and go quite a bit. If I don't have a zone set up, then any time that there's motion that's happening on the road or when my neighbors come home, if I have triggers and alarms set up, I would get notified of that every single time. Or if I have my record setting here to be set to when triggered, uh, any time that there's motion that's happening over at my neighbor's house, my camera will start recording. I might not need this uh, always to be recording when my neighbors come in and go, and I just want to know what happens when something comes uh, into my yard. So to do this, what you'd want to do is set up a zone. Uh, if I go into triggers, under motion sensor configure, use zones and hotspots, hit edit. Now I can go in here and start setting it up. Now by default, zone A is going to be all green, meaning that Blue Iris is monitoring the entire camera for motions and, and is going to trigger a uh, an alert if something is happening in a green area. To go and take out this area at my neighbors and um, on the road here, what I want to do is have the brush tool selected. I'm going to make this tool a little bit bigger. And then I can hold on control to erase. I'm wanting to erase the green area. All right. So now, if I hit OK, any traffic that happens on the road or when my neighbors come and go is not going to be considered a uh, monitored zone. Therefore, it's not going to trigger an alert, or if I have the record uh, only to when triggered happens, it's not going to record video either. Uh, the black out mask area feature, if you have this checked, is something that you can use for testing to see which area that a camera is being monitored. So if I have the black out mask area feature checked, you'll notice that just the area in green, uh, my grass here is an uh, area that is being monitored for triggers and the blacked out mask area is area that blue iris is not monitoring for motion however if there is motion that happens in the grass the blacked out area is still recorded this is obviously a feature that you're not going to leave on all the time because you uh, this is going to affect your live view on your app it's going to affect, affect if you have different remote viewing stations set up but this is going to be more for a uh, advanced like testing feature and I'll, I'll show you how this is actually useful later on. So I'm going to turn off blacked out masked areas and go ahead and save this camera. I'm going to show you another way that you can use zones uh, for to eliminate false alarms if you have um, a picture message that you have set up sent to your phone. So in this example on my front door camera I had the entire area being monitored for motion and I also have an alert set up that would send a picture SMS message to my phone whenever there was motion that happened on our front door. This is something useful for me. Uh, if I was not at home, I would be able to know if somebody walked up on my front door. However, I have a outdoor cat that we feed that likes to go up on our front porch and walk around and jump up on the chair. And I kept on getting alert after alert of just the cat walking around. So it got really annoying. So what I did is I went in and set up a second zone that would only be monitored and I would only get alerts from if there was action that happened within that second zone. So for my recording purposes, if you have when triggered set up, um, it's still going to be recorded in the areas when the cat comes up on the uh, porch, but I, was, I, I won't be notified um, if via picture message if somebody is walking around on the front porch. So how I set this up is if I go into trigger, configure my zones, I have zone A that monitors the entire screen. So again, this is going to be for your alerts down here at the bottom. I then will go in and create a second area, which is going to be called zone B. And what I did is I noticed that the cat walked around on the front porch here quite a bit, but he would never really cross in this type of area up here. So what I did is I set up an area and take out my brush tool. And I drew just like a line, like right here, saying that, if anything crosses into zone B, I want to have a picture a picture sent to my phone. So therefore, if anybody's walking up the driveway and going into the front door, it's going to send me a message. But um, if the cat's walking around on the porch, it's not going to send me anything. So now that I have zone B created, I'm going to save this, hit OK, OK. 
and then I go into alerts. Now, by default, all of these zones are checked to send an alert if there was motion happening. So zone A, if you remember, is the entire screen. So I don't want an alert when something happened in zone A. Zone B is the only area that I want to have an alert happen if there's something that moves. So only have zone B selected. And now I'll send an SMS message and it will play a notification to my phone if something happens on that little strip that I drew earlier. Um, one other thing I want to show you over here is the also re-triggers option. What this means is that during a time that there's motion that's happening, let's say something's moving right here, or the cat's moving, and it's the camera's in a triggered state, then if something would walk up on the front porch, which this happens a lot, he'll be chilling out here on my, uh, on my chair, and then the mail guy will come up and drop off a package, uh, it's not going to set off that alarm because he, the camera is already in a triggered state. So if you use the also re-triggers option, even, the cam even though he's you know moving around here on the front porch and the camera's in a triggered state, if the second zone, zone B, gets triggered, it'll also, it'll send this, this program, this uh, text message will get sent to my phone. So that's another way that you can use zones for is to eliminate different areas of the camera. The last thing I want to show you is the hotspot feature. Um, very simply, what hotspots will do is allow you to, um, a hotspot area zone will ignore all of your rules within the motion sensor settings. So even if you have your minimum object size really large or your make time set at something crazy like two seconds, if you have a hotspot area set up, for example, if I go here to hotspot zones and I draw a square like here on the shed, this means any any movement that happens whatsoever um, that happens within this hotspot zone is going to cause the uh, camera to trigger no matter what. No matter if it's just a slight little change in coloration or um, if something flies in front of that area, you're going to immediately get a uh, trigger from a hotspot zone. I don't really recommend using hotspots on outdoor cameras because you'll find that you're going to get a lot of false alarms. But you can use those in an area that you know that there's the, there's not a lot of um, traffic going in and out. But basically, hotspot in short will alert you immediately uh, if there's any motion that happens whatsoever. This is an extremely sensitive setting, and um, I just I don't recommend using it. Like I said earlier, on outdoor cameras. But at least that is a feature there if you do want to use a hotspot.